All right, Coach. Uh, it's crazy in high school, but you get bye weeks occasionally, especially if you play that week zero game. So how did how did Townsend and the coaching staff spend its bye week? Uh, we actually just focused on ourselves a lot more. Uh, we're again, you know, we're such a, a young team with our freshmen sophomores. Uh, the bye week really gave us a chance to kind of hone in some of the, the plays that we've installed. Um, you know, a little bit more technique focused on some other things. Uh, so we use it to our advantage to just really focus on us as a team and then try to get better for what we do. Uh, we came out of that Florence game, had a couple kids banged up with some injuries and stuff. Uh, so that was nice to, you know, kind of get those guys back on the field this week for practice mm-hmm. um, and get them running around again. Um, it's it's so – okay. Bef- before I ask you about Whitehall, was it a catch in the Montana State game? I'm asking every coach this week. Was it a catch or not? I, I watched that whole game. Uh, as a Montana fan, that's a catch all day long. Uh, when you watch it fast in real time, it's just tough to tell. Watch it on a replay, it's tough to tell. And then I seen it in the still picture, and in the still picture, it's a hundred percent a catch. Those are you know three different moments in time that give yep. three different you know perspectives. But I, I I say it was a catch. It wasn't called a catch. I, I know them guys over at Montana State. They're they're looking at it like all the rest of the coaches say, man. There's there's so many more plays in that game that we have to worry about yeah. fixing and you know, cleaning up some little mistakes before that catch ever becomes a moment. Uh, but yeah, I'll just, I'll go with you. I'll say in the still picture, it's definitely a catch. You know, and you just brought up a great point and you could tell you're a coach Van D's protege because, and we won't talk about him all year, but, or the rest of the year, but it comes down to nine fall starts, you know, different plays throughout the course of a game. And I think that could be a great teaching lesson for high school teams and, and and for for young kids like your team this, this year too. Yeah, I, I agree with you. There's um there's so much focus put on just that last few moments in a game, and especially a game like that. And these high school games are, are very similar. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we were in a couple of them last year ourselves. And you know, when you sit down with the kids and you you get them to understand, like you know, all of those little mistakes throughout the course of the game, they add up to those big moments, and that's what that's what creates situations like that. So. You know, taking care of the small mistakes, um, doing things the right way the whole entire game, uh, that's, that's you know, that's really been a focus of us during this bye week. And, and you know, that's a, that NSU game, that's a great example for it. That's a perfect timing almost as we talk to Townsend football coach Joe Horn here, Mike Miller, State Farm Hotline. I misspoke last week because the Class B needs to just do what Class A does. You have north, south, east, west, whatever. But Harrison, or Whitehall Harrison, is not now in your conference. They used to be in the five B. They're in the four B now. Is that right? Well, they're in the they're in the in the West, I believe. We got North, South, East, and West. You do now for okay. Fo- but, for football, yeah. Okay. It's see, it's it's so crazy. It's it's so crazy, you know. And in Big Fork, Big Fork leaving, Joliet coming back in, Whitehall changing around movement. It's it's tough to keep track of. Um, even for us in our school, uh, you know, we've got Lone Peak in now for volleyball. And another school, which I just can't think of right off the top of my head, you know. So we've got but some schools in our in our districts for other sports, but not for football. And it's 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 tough to keep track of all that. Um, you know, we just go out and play every week. And that's that's what that's what it's just always been my kind of way. Is you know, I'm, I never look at the brackets ahead of time. Um, I don't, you know, I don't pay attention to any postseason stuff until it's actually here. Uh, I don't know if that's right or wrong, but that's just who who I am, and I know our kids. A lot of our kids are the same way. You know, we just we just focus on this week and, and whoever we are, we're supposed to play, we play. Well, that is Whitehall. Uh, they have a new coach as well um, after the previous coach headed off to Anaconda. So what do you expect from the Trojans? Uh, you know, watching them on film, they are they're a competitive team. Uh, they got a lot of uh, tall, bigger kids. They're quarterback number two. Um, loves to keep the ball, get out and run on the edge. Um, is a good runner. Uh, not afraid to throw the long ball too, and they've got a couple of receivers that are, you know, ability to have the ability to to stretch downfield. So, you know, they're they're kind of similar to us in trying to find their identity and kind of you know, uh, you know get into the new system. Uh, but I do expect a, just a, a solid competitive game. Um, you know, two similar teams, you know, coming out with similar situations. So it should be it should be a really good competitive game, and I really think it just just like we talked earlier. It's going to boil down to you know who makes less mistakes in these games, as as you know every game does. But especially, especially in these type of games with you know new systems and young kids, it's just whoever makes the least amount of mistakes and can 
you know, stay with it for four quarters and then not let those mistakes, you know, keep mounting up or, or, you know, really push down their belief that they can get in there and then win the game is going to, that's going to determine a lot of the outcome. The rooster just crowed. It's time to wake up. I heard a rooster or was that a kid? Oh yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm talking to you outside in the, the morning sunshine here. So yeah. <laughs> well, no, the rooster's crowing. Okay. <laughs> it's like, or yep. is that a kid He's... screaming? No, I'm not. I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the roosters in the back, in the backyard. And you timed it out really well. Cause the train was going by right, right before you, you called me this morning. Oh, perfect. And, yeah. If it, if we'd have to right, wait for a train. That's for sure. Cause it still gets loud up here on the hill, but oh, you know, goodness. you got to, That is classic. Uh, Talking to Joe Horn, the uh, Townsend football coach here, Mike Miller, State Farm Hotline. Coaches all, you know, this week that I've talked to are like, you know, we just got to get back to basics. We just have to play basics. And it's amazing how much playing just basic football or any sport can get you righted, get the ship righted, you know, and and I know you guys are 0-2. You had the bye week, but – Basic football, and it just seems like that's what Townsend's going to do this year, and it it could definitely work. A hundred percent, it can work. Um, yeah, it, it's just you know, run hard, take good angles, tackle, block the right guy. Um, all of those, then they, those win football games. They make a big difference. Just you know, um, no mistakes and, and pure effort can win football games. There's. There's, there's lots of situations where as coaches, we try and find magic plays, you know, or uh, defensively, as a defensive coach, you try and find an adjustment for every play that, the, you know, the opposing offense has. Um, and you get so focused on trying to do fancy stuff and different adjustments and all those things that sometimes it overwhelms the high school kid. You know, they don't have eight hours a day to put into to learning some of those things and those schemes. And so kind of trimming it down a little bit, getting back to just some basics and taking care of, of, of ourselves and, you know, basic football uh, can make a big difference. Um, I know we found out, you know, we've, we've had to do that more than once this year with the, you know, personnel changes and shuffling. Um, you know, when you put some, some kids in some positions where they're not used to playing or they haven't practiced yet, uh, you have to, you've got to, you got to close out some of those plays and you got to take it back to, you know, guard pole and ISO and power and, you know, basic football. And assignment and alignment. I was waiting for you to say it. <laughs> always assignment and alignment. That's, <laughs> that's, it's always assignment and alignment. If you put yourself in a position to be successful before the ball is ever snapped, there you, you know, you're going you're gonna to be okay. You've got the A gap. You've got the B gap. You've got this gap. Don't yep. deviate from it. Just no. do it and you'll yep. be, you'll be fine. <laughs> I remember, you'll, you'll, okay. I remember my young, you know, co- coaches uh, growing up that would always say that don't deviate, just follow where you're supposed to go and good things will happen. Yep. It do is your job truck that the guy next to you will do his. Absolutely. Uh, it is national cream filled donut day. I like donuts. I don't like the cream filled ones. What about you? Um, old fashioned glazed cake donut. There you go. Always. Yep. Um, and I don't eat very many of them, but if I ever get a chance to, to have a donut, it's, it's old fashioned glazed cake donut. It is also national school pitcher day. Uh, do you remember, do you look back at some of your old school pitchers? Uh, no, not often. Um, we just had our school pitcher day down here on the seventh last week. Uh, I, I, you know, being a teacher now, my, my wife forced me to get a school picture taken in the yard with the kids before we go down to school every year, the first day. Um, you know, my kids are in high school. She still walks them into the classroom, takes their picture at their desk. So uh-huh. Just, just embarrasses the heck out of them. Uh, but no, I don't, I, you know, with, with being in the school and in, I'm also the yearbook advisor down here in Townsend. So I see a lot of school pictures all year long. So I don't generally find myself going back and looking at too many. If I do see one, um, it's usually because one of the students down here is trying to pitch me a hard time and they'll go back and find something and, you know, they'll find some old picture and they'll, they'll, they'll make a post about it or print it out and put it on my wall with, you know, some funny note. And that's usually when I see old pictures when they're trying to make fun of me a little bit. That's what I need is one of the guys that are going to listen to this to send me a, send me a old school picture of coach and I'll put it up on the show. Yeah, that's a great idea. <laughs> and I won't tell you which kid sends it to me so that you don't make him run. <laughs> no, yeah. There's, I, I got a pretty good idea of which ones would be the first suspects in pulling that picture of the off. 
Well, there's the challenge to the Bulldogs. Send me a picture of Coach Horn when he was a youngster. Hey, uh, Coach, good luck this weekend, and uh, safe, uh, safe thoughts with everything that's going on um, with life and, and all of that, and have a great day today and uh, tomorrow, and get a big win over Whitehall, will you? Hey, we'll do our best, Jason, and thanks for calling, man. It's always good talking to you. Look forward to talking to you next week.